Today, I'm gonna show you how to do the Homelander laser eyes effect from the boys completely in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Check it out. Hey folks, Nathan here. So you read the title, saw the intro, you know what we're doing this episode. We're doing the laser eyes effect from Amazon's The Boys. And I'm gonna show you two ways how to do it totally in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. One method using the edit and color page and the other inside of Fusion. And stick around to the end of this video to check out a skit I made that ties it all together. Also, I have time codes down here to skip ahead to whatever part of the effect you wanna cover for your convenience. So open up Resolve, grab the asset links down in the description, and by the end of this video, you'll be doing laser eyes like a pro. So to do the glowing red eye effect, you're gonna need your actor pretty much face on with camera. You can also do a profile, but in this example, I'm gonna be showing a face on shot. And I just had my wife off screen, turning off the light and then shining a red flashlight into my face. Now the red flashlight's super important because it gives us that color of the red glow that we're gonna have on the face that we could add through post, but it's always better if you can have practical lighting on set to help motivate VFX and then you're ready to get started. So for the glowing eyes shot, I just took that original clip of the lights turning off and the red light in my face, cut it into two pieces so I can make two separate grades for each shot. Now that we have our two pieces, this is what we're going to bring into Fusion. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and create a compound clip. And you can name that whatever you want and hit create. The reason why I'm creating a compound node is because I wanna work with the corrected version of the clip when going into VFX. If I disable this, I don't wanna work with this version and then apply the corrections to the VFX because it's gonna look super wonky. So we're gonna come into Fusion. Now here we are on the Fusion page and don't mind this cutoff bit at the bottom here, that's covered with our output blanking on the edit page. So we have our media in and our media out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit shift spacebar and we're gonna add a planar tracker. So you can just type in planar and there you go, planar tracker add. We now wanna come all the way over to the end of the clip and we just wanna hit set. So that is our reference kind of starting point. And we can zoom in by holding in control or command and the keyboard and then using your scroll wheel to just zoom in. So now we wanna draw a little shape around this eye here. And the reason why I went to the end is just because it's actually brighter at the end, so it's a great spot to start off. So for your tracker and motion type, it's kind of one of those things where you have to test it out and see which one works best for your footage. For this particular shot, I find that translation and point works best, and then we just track all the way back to the beginning. And as you can see, it gets kind of squirrely at the beginning here because it's so dark, there's not much for it to follow, but that looks pretty good. Now we can hit Create Planar Transform, and that's gonna create this jobby here. Now let's just name this by hitting F2 on our keyboard, and I'm gonna name it Right Eye Motion because it's the motion data for the eye on the right side of the screen. So now we can just take this, move this over here, and then we're gonna again hit Shift Spacebar and add another Planar Tracker. And this one is going to be for our left eye. So I'm just gonna zoom in again with control and the scroll wheel and go all the way to the end here and press set. Now this side is significantly darker, so I'm gonna make a bit bigger of a rectangle. And for this shot, I find using hybrid point area and a fine TRS plus shear works the best. So then we can track all the way back to the beginning and again, you can see it gets super wonky there at the beginning, but that's not a huge issue going forward. And later I'll show you why. So we're gonna create another planar transform and again, hit F2 on your keyboard and name it left eye motion, boom. Now we can just take our motion and bring that off to the side. So now let's just zoom out here and look at our clip. So what we wanna do is we wanna make these eyes a bright glowing red to match the red on his face. And we've just made the tracking data for each of those eyes so we'll be able to stick it to his face. So now we gotta make the eyes. So to do that, we gotta start by adding a background node. So you hit shift spacebar on your keyboard and type in background BG and there it is. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna bring this to this second planar tracker and it will immediately create a merge node. Now right off the bat, you'll see that we 
can't. <laughs> so we're gonna bring our alpha channel on our background node all the way down and now we can see our face again. So now to draw the glowing eye, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit shift space bar again and bring up our paint tool. So just paint and add. And to make it nice and glowy, we're gonna hit shift space bar again and add a soft glow node. So you see that here, soft glow. So now if we go into our paint tool, we can go in and paint something on and you see it's kind of glowy and kind of fun. But by default in the paint tool, you're actually on the multi-stroke feature up here and that has set durations. So it's set to one frame right now. So if we move forward, it's not there anymore. Now we can increase the duration, but what we can also do is let's just hit control Z to undo that little drawing. If we go up here to just the standard stroke tool, now if we add this glowy effect and we go through the clip, it stays there throughout the entire duration of the shot. So I highly recommend clicking on stroke up here for this particular effect. And if you wanna get rid of anything, you have your erase tool and then just go over top of it and erase it. And make sure to change the apply mode back to color to be able to draw again. I'm gonna hit control Z to get rid of that. So now we're gonna zoom in on this first eye and we're gonna start off with the right eye. We're now gonna go into our brush controls. You have a variety of different controls here, but we're gonna stick with the soft brush. And we're actually gonna increase that softness by quite a bit and just bring up the size a little bit here. Yeah, that sizing looks about right. You can see the sizing increase with that red circle. Right around that sizing for this, just something that'll fit in his eye is great. So we can draw that and yeah, that size is looking pretty good, but the color's not great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this drawing and we're gonna go into the color of our paint tool. Now, you'd think right off the bat that you wanna go for red if you want a nice red glowing look, but we actually want the paint itself to be less saturated because that's gonna be the brightest point in the middle of the eye and then the soft glow is gonna add that nice red to it. You'll see what I mean in a second here. So let's bring that saturation out a little bit but just a little bit of redness there. So now we have something like this. Now that's starting to look pretty good and glowy. So we can hit control Z to get rid of that. Now go into our soft glow parameters. And if you see here, we have color scale. Now we wanna push it red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the green way down and the blue way down. We then go back to our paint tool and draw on this. And now you see we're getting that nice red. But if we scroll through a clip, you'll see it's not actually attached to the face. So what we wanna do is we're just gonna take these nodes, bring them up a little bit. We're then gonna grab our right eye motion for the right eye, then hold in shift on your keyboard and drag it in between these two bad boys until you see this turn blue and yellow. Bring it in and boom. Now you're tracked the eye as we scroll through. So now we can go back into the paint tool and if you want, you can erase what you have so far and maybe just draw something a little bit nicer that's going to fit. For me, I just wanna keep it kind of simple. So we're just gonna do a few clicks. And for right now, I think that's actually looking pretty good. Now we wanna add in the other eye. And if you wanna move around in your node graph, just hold down your scroll wheel and you can move anywhere around on the node graph. So anyway, we wanna add in another paint tool. Well, we want it to have the same parameters as this first paint tool. So actually what we'll do is we'll hit control C on our keyboard. We'll then click off of it and press control V. And now we have that paint tool that we can use for the left eye. We're then gonna bring our output from our background. And now we wanna add in the motion. So we're gonna bring it into left eye motion. So now we wanna pump it into the same soft glow. So if we bring it right over directly to that soft glow, it's going to kick off the right eye. So what we want to do, we can hit control Z to undo that. And we actually want to bring it in to the output of the right eye. Then that creates a merge node. And now both of them are going into this soft glow for when we have to do keyframes later. So now we're going to go back onto this left eye and just for kicks, let's do some labeling. So now if we go back over to the left eye, you may see that it put us on this select mode. I'm not entirely sure why it does that, but if we just go back into stroke, we can then go into our eraser and erase that doubled up right eye. So then we can go back to the color apply mode and try and draw something onto this left eye. So again, you wanna keep it super simple. I'm just gonna go one, two, and three. 
Perfect, that works. And then if we scroll through a clip, you can see they're both tracked to the shot. Now, what we can do is we actually wanna kind of fade it in. So we can do that within our merge nodes. So if we go back to the beginning, it kind of looks weird with these glowing eyes not illuminating the face. That would make more sense further down here. But at the beginning, we want to be darker and then kind of fade in through keyframes to get brighter to match the face. So we're gonna do that by keyframing our blend. So let's start keyframing by hitting this little diamond here. We're then gonna bring the blend mode all the way down. Boom, glowing eyes, gone. We're then gonna come over a few frames. Let's bring up to like, let's go over like the seventh, eighth frame. And then we're gonna bring it up just a scooch. You can see those, that face coming in just a little bit, but it's still fairly dark, kind of hidden. As we go forward to like the 20th frame, you can see it's getting quite a bit brighter. So we're gonna bring it up just a bit. Yeah, let's go just a little over halfway there. And then by about the 30th frame, let's crank that thing to full brightness. Now let's go back to the beginning and see what we're looking at. So we're gonna play it through. Yeah, that increases pretty decently. So now another thing that we're going to keyframe is in the soft glow parameters. So as you see here, we have the glow size. Now, if we take that down, it's going to spread out that glow size quite a bit, but then if we bring it in, it really concentrates it. So let's just zoom in a little bit here. I'm gonna hold in control on my keyboard and zoom in. And you can kind of see that difference. You see that as it kind of goes in, I think that looks really cool because it's like charging up the eyes and all the energy is focusing in that one area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a super big glow size. So go back to the beginning and we're gonna start keyframing. So just hit that diamond there and then go ahead a few frames, maybe to around that eighth frame. And we can bring the glow size just a little bit smaller, but not much. We want it still to be quite dark there. As we go forward, let's go around to the 20 or so. We can then bring the glow size a bit smaller. So it's starting to get nice and red. And then as we come over to like 30, let's get it just a bit smaller. And then after 30, let's go all the way to like 40. We can bring it way down. So it's like it's getting more intense. So as we watch that through from the beginning, you can see it's getting more intense as it goes. And it's this really kind of spooky looking red eye effect at the end. And we can just kind of zoom out there. So now believe it or not, we're done in Fusion. We're then gonna go back to the edit page to put some nice touches on it. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna add an adjustment clip. And we're just gonna zoom out here and trim it to size. And as you can see, our Fusion clip is rendering. So we have a render cache, so it'll play back nicely. Awesome, yeah, that's already looking pretty cool. So now we're gonna go into our adjustment clip and go into the color page. We're then going to go down to our Resolve FX Lite for the lens reflections effect, which is available in the free version of Resolve. We're then gonna bring that on and we want a nice lens reflection on here, but the problem is it's not quite bright enough. So what we wanna do is we wanna add another effect in front of it. I'm gonna hit Shift S on my keyboard to add a serial node before the lens reflections, and then we're gonna go over to the glow node. Now, nothing happens, but if we go up to the top here and you see this shine threshold, what that means is how bright something has to be for the glow effect to take hold and start shining. And I'll show you what I mean. As we bring that down, things are gonna get super duper glowy, and you can see it on your waveform down here. So I find using your waveform as a reference is really helpful when you're gonna be keyframing your shine threshold so you can see exactly when it starts to make changes. And it seems to be right around that 200 mark is when it starts to shoot up. And the reason we wanna make it brighter is so that we get those cool lens reflections. So then if we come over to this next effect, we can turn it off, no lens reflections, boom, lens reflections. It adds that little bit of realism. So we're gonna go back to our glow effect and we wanna keyframe the shine threshold so that it fits with the actual effect because it would look cooler if it got more glowy and shiny over time as the eyes kind of charge up. So we wanna to come to the beginning here and bring our shine threshold up so it's not having any impact. We then wanna start keyframing, so we're gonna click our diamond here and then go ahead further in the shot. Right around here, we can have a little bit of an impact. So let's bring it down just until we see a bit of a change coming in on our waveform down here. We can then go ahead a bit further and now it's definitely getting brighter. So let's decrease that shine threshold a bit and now we can see it getting brighter right around 83 here, and then we can go near the end and bring it down to like, let's say 50-ish, 60 or so, and then right at the end, let's go crazy with it and go to like 30 or something. 
Yeah, so then it gets really bright. You can see that glowiness is increasing and it's getting way more intense as time goes on and we're getting those cool lens reflections. Now, back to the lens reflections, we can actually increase the global brightness of the reflections. And let's increase the anamorphism a little bit just to make them stretch out a little bit more and kind of cover this eye. I basically want to cover up anything that looks a little bit janky is kind of my goal. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here. Now there's a ton of different parameters that you can adjust in lens reflections. But one thing I'm going to show you is the lens coating. Now, for your particular shot, if you're not doing red eyes, you're doing some other color, you may want to actually change what the lens reflection is. So we can do like an orange or maybe like a blue. But for me, I find that the violet actually works really well to kind of offset from red to show that it is a lens reflection and not necessarily part of the effect that his eyes are creating, but more an optical artifact that's going on within the lens. I find that contrasting color is helpful to sell the effect. So now we're gonna go back into the edit page and the final piece of cake I wanna to toss on top here is another adjustment clip. And we're just gonna add a little bit of motion. So I shot this in 4K so it gives us a little bit of room to kinda of move things around a little bit. We're gonna to come to near the end of the clip and we just wanna set what we want as our final frame. So I'm gonna put him at like, yeah, like 140 or so. So he's really close. And then we're gonna bring him over. I say him, but it's me. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're gonna put me roughly in the center of the frame here, just so I look kind of creepy. And then we're gonna keyframe back. So we're gonna go back to the beginning here, just where we can start seeing, yeah. And then let's bring me back to like 1.2 and let's slowly kind of ease it out. So it's gonna ease in here. Yeah, that looks super intense. So then if we play through, we get that awesome glowing eye effect and leading us into our actual laser eye shot. So now to actually shoot the laser, you need two things. You need a shot of you in front of your burned object. In my case, it's a candle that has been lit. And then you also need a shot of you in front of the same object that has not been burned. If you can help it, try not to move it between takes. But if you look at ours here, I accidentally did move it and I can show you how to fix that. So this effect can totally be done without opening up fusion at all. Now to start things off, we wanna get this transition between the unlit candle to the lit candle going well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the unlit candle, we're gonna have it over top of our lit candle, then gonna go into the color page. I'm just gonna close my open effects here and I'm gonna to come to the end of the node tree and I'm gonna add a new node with Alt S. I'm then going to add an alpha output and I'm just gonna drag my blue alpha channel here to my alpha output. Now I'm gonna go into my power window and let's just zoom in and create a mask around this candle. Now when grabbing the mask, make sure to also grab the shadow. And now you can see that they're definitely not in the same spot. First off, we're just gonna soften this out just a scooch and maybe drag it a little bit inside. Okay, now we can go back to the edit page and try and get it so that our candle is over top of our unlit candle. So we're gonna move it around. And that's close, but we have to get it a little bit bigger. And there we seem to have it covered. We can zoom out with Z. And then if we turn it off and then on, it is in the same spot, but if you'll check here, the orientation is indeed different. Now, while this is less than ideal, you have to keep in mind that this is only gonna be on the screen for maybe two or three frames. Definitely try to get it right the first time, but if you end up with a situation like this, it's definitely recoverable. So we'll zoom out with Z and we'll drag our top shot over and we just wanna have a few frames. So maybe we'll go one, two, three. Yeah, I think three frames is enough. So now we're gonna come up to our laser asset, which you can grab for free from Production Crate, link down in the description. And we're just gonna drag that over top here. And you'll see you get this really cool looking laser effect over top of your image. Now it's definitely longer than we need right now. So let's just trim it down a bit. Now, first thing we're gonna do is adjust the composite mode. Right now we have it on normal and it kind of looks dark but if we go down and we bring it into screen, it lightens it up a little bit, it makes it act more like a light source, which is great. So you can kind of see my hand through it there. So now if we click through a shot, we can kind of see where we have the reaction. So it looks like we start to look away there. So let's end the laser at that part. And I'm just gonna unsnap with N and actually give us one frame where we don't have the laser. So we're gonna bring one frame over, perfect. So yeah, this is where he starts to look away. So then we have one frame without laser. Cool. So now it's time to orient it so that it lines up with my eyes. 
So let's get it into position. And it may take a little bit of doing, but there, we're able to get it pretty much on my eye and lined up with the candle. Maybe we can add that angle just a little bit more. Bring it so that it is indeed over my eye. Kind of lines up with where the candle wick is. Yeah. Now the next thing we're gonna do is actually track the motion to my eye. Now, ideally when tracking, you wanna go into fusion, but you have to keep in mind, we're only dealing with like six frames. We can do this by hand, super easy. So, we'll just click on our position here. Let's zoom in on my eye, and just pick a spot in the eye and try and keep it consistently there. So we're gonna go over one frame. We see that we go up a little bit, so let's just bring it up just a scooch, over just a scooch over another frame, again, it moves up just slightly. Again, still moving up as we go over frames. I may have went up a little too far there. Only a few more frames now. And then down a little bit, and maybe to the left slightly. And that's it. So now let's zoom out with Z, and then we can watch it through. Yeah, that looks like it's coming out of my eyes. Okay, so that's great, but we now have a problem. We have the laser beam going through the candle, and oh, well, that's not what we want at all. So what we want to do is we actually want to zoom out a little bit here. We want to take this layer, and I'm going to hold in Alt, drag, and just drag it above. And what I want to do is I want to draw a mask around that area. So I'm going to drag it in a bit, and then go into the color page. We're then going to add our alpha output, and add a new node at the end with Alt S. Again, blue to blue, easy peasy. Now we're gonna draw a mask on this section. And what we're gonna draw a mask on is actually the front of the candle so that it looks like the laser beam goes into the front of the candle. So check this out, you can do it super easy. So we're just gonna go through kind of the rough surface of the candle here because it has gotten quite a bit of use over the years as you can tell just masking around it. Now, once we get off the top of the candle, we can go super loosey-goosey with it because we don't want the laser to go anywhere past the candle. So we can just go all the way up to the end and like over to here and then close it up and boom, it looks like the laser is stopping at the candle. So that looks pretty good. We can just come in a power window to kind of see it there and we can also just increase that softness maybe a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good because you also have to keep in mind, it's only gonna be on the screen again for a few frames. And as we go over, it does look a little less janky and it looks like it's stopping right there inside of the candle. Now we can go back into the edit page and we have that piece of candle over top of everything. And to show you what we have, it's just this portion. So it's that piece of candle and it's just stopping right there. So the laser beam is hidden behind this piece. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our little explosion in the candle. We're gonna bring this layer up one, and we're gonna go into our production crate footage. Again, link down in the description. And we have this awesome little explosion here that is way too big for what we wanna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this thing way, way down. And for me personally, I just think it's funny to have the tiny little explosion there right after that kind of epic moment of my eyes getting super big. I just think this is funny to have this tiny little poof. So you can see it kind of fits in the candle area and as we bring it down, it does look like it's actually inside of the candle, which is great. So if you look at it, you'll see that it actually has a dark line around the edge, which isn't really consistent with an explosion in real life. So if we come into composite mode and we go down again to screen, it's making it act more like a light source. So yeah, that looks definitely better for sure. And we can just play through the animation with our arrow keys. So let's go back to the beginning and we'll see, we get a little explosion upon the hit and then it kind of sparks out. Now we want those sparks to actually run down the candle. So what I can do is take this top layer and then just disable it here. And now the sparks are gonna kind of run down on top of the candle. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so now the sparks run down on top and it just looks kind of neat. But again, we're super zoomed in right now. So if we zoom out, so let's check it out. And boom, it's just a tiny little poof leading to a really underwhelming light in the candle. So while it's starting off great, we have to think of a few things. We have this laser beam that's hitting this candle that's causing an explosion. Now, if you were to actually have an explosion like that in real life, it would give off some light, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an adjustment clip and then we're gonna take that and just trim it to size. So we can come into the color page and what we wanna do is we want to make a power window. So we're gonna grab our circle here 
we're gonna bring this thing down and we want it kind of skinny, but not super skinny. And we got to bring out the softness like crazy. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to make this area brighter. So we can just come into our offset and you can see it definitely is getting brighter in that area. Maybe let's bring a bit of a color in too. Yeah, sure, a bit of a red kind of matches the red laser. So now if we come out of the power window, you can see that taking effect. So it definitely gets brighter in that area, but it's staying brighter in that area. We want it to change over time. And the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna come to, let's say here, come into keyframes and we're on node one and we have corrector one here. So we're going to enable corrector one for keyframes, then just make any adjustment here. And we now see a keyframe at this frame. And can go over a few frames. Maybe let's just bring it down a scooch. So then it gets brighter in that area. You can see it definitely gets brighter. And then we want it to get less bright. And then we can bring it down. And maybe even bring it back to normal by just by double clicking in the middle there. So, so now we can check it out in the edit page. Go over here and see. Yeah, we just get a little puff of brightness. Now that's cool but we want more than just that area getting bright. We also want the laser to get bright. So again, we're gonna add another adjustment clip, go into our color page. And again, we're just going to grab power window and yeah, let's grab another ellipse. We're gonna turn this on its side and drag it out just kind of like a football here. We're then gonna make that super duper soft just mega soft, okay? And this one I think can stay consistent throughout the whole run of the laser. So we wanna make it more red and a bit brighter. Yeah, so let's increase that a bit. So we just want it to be kind of like a flash. So now as we go through in our edit page, we can, yeah, we definitely get that kind of flash. And if we want, we can actually fade it in on each clip. And I really like doing my fade ins with these here because they allow you to do half frames and things like that. You're not just limited to fading on the frame. So now if we watch it through, yeah, that's looking great. A little flash of brightness in and around here and a flash coming from the laser. Now what we can really do to help sell the realism is we're gonna bring in another adjustment clip and we're going to add lens reflections. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit here, but we have to add lens reflections to actually the whole clip. And I'll show you why in a second here. And now we can come in here to the color page. So we're gonna come in into our open effects, go down to resolve FX light and bring on our lens reflections. Now, as you can see, we get this effect that is very dramatic. So the reason why we're gonna to need to keep it on the whole shot is because it'll look weird if we have the reflections from the fridge here, but we don't have it here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring it down a bunch because it looks a little extreme but if we blend it at around that like 40% mark, it does start to look a little bit more normal. And then you still get a nice flash of red light that comes out whenever the laser beam is on screen. So if we go back to the edit page, so if we play it through, you get boom, that nice quick flash on screen. And then things still kind of look normal when it comes out of the laser shot. So the final thing I'm gonna add is just give him some glowing red eyes. Now I showed you how to do this with this effect here in Fusion but we can do it in the color page if you have the studio version of Resolve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in on this bottom clip here, go until the laser beam is gone, and then I'm gonna make a cut. And now we can go into the color page. So we're gonna come into the color page. I'm gonna check our clips to make sure that we are on the right clip. So yeah, that looks like the right one. You can always double check with the timeline. Yes, that is the correct clip that we've grabbed. We kind of have everything stacked on top of each other. Then I'm gonna go to the end of our node graph and we're gonna hit Alt S, add a new serial node. We're gonna go down to Resolve FX Light and grab a lens flare, which is indeed required to have the studio version of Resolve, but it's super powerful. We're gonna change our lens flare preset to MIR, whatever, and we're gonna make this sucker way smaller. So go down here to global corrections and just bring it way, way, way down in size. And we can also bring that anamorphism out a little bit. It's just gonna stretch it out and make it more, well, eye-shaped in this case. Okay, great. And then we can go into our position and let's just bring that position down a little bit. Okay, so you may be thinking right now, yeah, that looks cool, but it's white. Well, we can colorize it. So I'm gonna come down and colorize the glare to red. And then we can also go into our flare spot and turn that to red again. 
and now it has that really cool kind of demonic laser eyes look like Homelander from The Boys. Now we can go back into the edit page and let's see our final effect. And just for kicks, let's go back kind of from the beginning. So here we go. Boom, little laser beam and then he's celebrating. So folks, it's just that easy. And as promised from the beginning, here's a skit tying it all together using some editing, sound design and acting from yours truly. Check it out. Hmm. 